They're heading east. Russia is this morning refocusing its war effort after failing to take the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. A convoy of vehicles is approaching from the north as Russia boosts its forces in the Donbass region. Ukraine's President Zelensky says if Donbass falls to Russia, Kyiv will again be under threat. It comes as New Zealand troops prepare to deploy to Europe tomorrow to help support the war efforts in Ukraine. Joining me now, Defence Force Commander of Joint Forces, Rear Admiral James Gilmore. Good morning. Great to have you on the programme. Um, can we start, first of all, with the $7.5 million that's going towards weapons? Um, who exa where exactly is that money going and what will it buy? Well, uh, yeah, thank you, Ryan. I, I, I guess that is a question for foreign affairs, but my understanding is that it will go to uh, our partner nation, the UK, and uh, the determination of what it will buy will be made, I guess, between um, uh, their Secretary of State and our foreign affairs. Do you know what... Because we were going to send the javelins, or there was the, the talk that we would send the javelins. We were told yesterday that would be about five minutes of firepower in a war. Do you know what $7.5 million bucks would get you? Well, it depends what you buy, I guess. I mean, in terms of getting um, lethal aid from New Zealand to uh, to the theatre, it's a, it's a really long supply chain, you can imagine. Um, so in, in many ways, logistically, it makes sense to provide funding so that capabilities can be bought or purchased uh, closer to where they are, they are needed. Um, you know, we're a small nation with a small nation's defence force, so what can provide whilst we add value and it all adds up, I think in terms of uh, just the rate of effort it would take to get dangerous air cargo all the way across the planet, it makes sense to purchase things closer to where it's needed. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, I suppose. Did you, did the Defence Force ever recommend to the Minister that we do that, that we, that we send the javelins or get them there somehow? Well, the way we go about this is we determine um, a, a range of military response options as part of New Zealand's response. And they go all the way, um, you know, from something that's uh, you know, really, uh, you know, pretty low level where it comes to people or it might come to information, all the way through to significant contributions of our capabilities and our people um, and everything in between. So, uh, so yes, our, our job to, is to provide uh, options to Cabinet that are comprehensive. We don't expect that Cabinet will take up everything and, of course, they have to make judgments that are based on you know the right balance of what we can provide and where we can. And of course, the decision now has been made that we will move forward with um, uh, theatre air mobility via the uh, C-130 Hercules aircraft. They'll, that, that aircraft will leave tomorrow. We've already got people um, move forward. We've been providing intelligence support. It's going to be a real challenge to just understanding and making sense of, of the demand that's coming through. So liaison officers into the UK headquarters um, and into the NATO headquarters will follow. And we expect our logistics planning team to join the international effort um, at the uh, International Donors Coordination Centre, which will be in Stuttgart, Germany. This will be all happening over the next three or four days. Yeah, and I want to talk about that, absolutely. Um, but you're just saying, just so that we're clear, with the, the javelins that were on offer from the get-go, they were an option that were on the table, but actually getting them there was going to be the problem. We couldn't just piggyback with the Australians. Uh, yeah, um, in fact, the, the, I guess there's two elements to that question, Ryan. Uh, one is the what, and then... The other one is the how. The what, absolutely. We, we, we essentially can um, provide to uh, government options that are all, all the way across our military response um, uh, capabilities, uh, including javelins, including vehicles, including weapons and, and ammunition. All of these things are, uh, are, are options. How we get them there it does become a logistics challenge, and you mentioned Australian sport. Uh, yes, that would be one of the options. Commercial sport is another, or we move them ourselves. Uh, a little bit more tricky, but we, you know, um, we, we're up to uh, we're up to tricky problems. And I think the um, uh, the decision that's been made yesterday um, is uh, completely supportable. We're ready to go. That'll happen. And as the uh, conflict unfolds, particularly with what we're seeing now towards the eastern borders of uh, of Ukraine, um, our job will be to continually uh, continually refine those things that we might um, bring forward to government to consider uh, in, in terms of additional options or tweaking the ones that we've sent forward. Who do you think is going to win this war? Do you think it's inevitable that Ukraine will lose some of its territory? Well, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been like everybody else, Ryan, watching global commentary on this, and, and I must confess to being, um, being worried and feeling a little bleak with regards to great outcomes for Ukraine, the way that this is shaping up. Um, I, ultimately, I, I would hate, hate to predict it, um, and I would think that the centre of this being defused is being, provide, is being able to provide Vladimir Putin something that looks like he's won. Um, and now what that looks like, 
I think that's going to be a tricky outcome, and uh, uh, and international theorists um, with bigger brains than me will have to get to that one. But ultimately, I worry um, that yes, um, uh, seceding some territory might be the only way it can happen. But that's a decision for Ukraine, um, and and ultimately, we don't know whether that would be enough in the long run anyway. No. How worrying is it as an adversary is uh, Dornikov, the new general that's been appointed? Some have pointed to his history of targeting civilians, particularly basically pancaking, flattening parts of Syria. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think from uh, you know from Ukrainian side and those that will be supporting uh, Ukraine, it's a positive outcome. Uh, but I can also reflect that whilst um, he was involved in military campaigns that were uh, disregarded um, human safety and human life, um, I don't believe that's going to be a monstrous shift from what we've been observing in Ukraine anyway. Mm, yeah, that's a fair point to make. And on that, we've sent intelligence officers already to work with counterparts in the UK and in Belgium. Have any of our intelligence officers, as far as you're aware, seen the evidence of war crimes? I don't have that information to hand, Ryan. Do you know what they're actually working on? Because their brief at the beginning was to do work for Ukraine, or on Ukraine, I should say, or to relieve um, those defence force personnel in other countries who were doing so, so doing other work, basically. Do you know what they have been working on? Well, uh, I, I guess I should say that intelligence, intelligence and the provision of intelligence is one thing that I won't get into um, uh, the, this morning. It doesn't make sense to do that. Um, we, we, we're providing support to, yes, offset our partner nation's effort. Um, we've also been providing um, uh, support from, from in New Zealand uh, from, an, uh, from an intelligence perspective to offset the circadian difference. So whilst they're uh, sleeping, we're up. Um, we can, it means that that intelligence function can rotate 24-7. The people that we're moving forward are to con contribute to the overall effort, but what they're actually looking at, I won't get into no, I think that's entirely fair enough. I think people will forgive you for that this morning. Um, are we, just in terms of a technicality here, if you mobilise in support of a war effort, are you technically at war? Is New Zealand technically at war? Well, I'll leave that to Crown Law and the advice of the government. But from my perspective, I, would ex I think it's reasonably clear that our status as a neutral country has shifted. Thanks so much for your time this morning. New Zealand's Defence Force Commander of Joint Forces, Rear Admiral James Gilmore.